fine with Why, it. Why, did somebody say something? <laughs> <laughs> Hi all, well here we are, Christmas 2012. What a year it's been too. You know, this time last year I bought you the new Beast 3D with the AS3X technology. What a plane that was, eh? And then the year just kept going and going, more planes and more planes. The SBAC 3D. Now, you get where I'm going. I've enjoyed flying these planes and I've enjoyed flying all my warbirds and everything else. And if you've been following me on the videos, you know I've got quite a few other planes that I've been flying as well. Well, I was ready to step up for the next step and I didn't know really what to get. I've been looking at quite a few planes and uh, I've done my homework and I've decided one of the reasons being I'm going to stick with foam a little bit longer than the balsa because you know you can buy all the parts for this plane. Yep, I've bought myself an E-Flight Carbon Z Yak 54 because I reckon I'm ready to have a go for one of these, try and learn some more precision flying and uh, had a word with Mike and he reckons to me that these are a really good plane. Now I've done my homework and uh, it's yes when they first come out a year and a half ago they had a few problems but they've all been sorted and it's hard to find a uh, bad comment about them on the net now so I thought I'd give one a go and I know they've been out for a while and there's reviews and everything there but I thought hey let's do a Chuck T style unboxing review because so many of you have followed me from the ultra micros through to the park zone planes and now we're going to something different here again so hey I thought some of you might like to follow me along so I'm going to do a short unboxing we're not going to do too much here because if you're buying one of these planes you know how to put them together you know how to bind you shouldn't be buying one if you don't so Anyway, let's get it out of the box and have a look how it is boxed up these days when you get them. And uh, then I'll put it together and it won't be long and I'll be out for a maiden and we'll show you how I go flying the Carbon Z Yak 54. From all reports, they're pretty easy to fly, if you can fly that is of course. And uh, you know, I've been practicing heaps on the sim, so we'll see how we go. Hey, eh? Anyway, let's get it out of the box and have a look. Well, there you have it out of the box, and I can tell you what, it is really packed in there well. They're really uh, packing these things quality-wise these days. I've just loosened this here, I'll just show you. Look at that, it's even got foam in there, a bit of sponge-like to protect the uh, paintwork on this fuselage. And look how big that fuselage is, I tell you, it's huge. Okay, I'm going to get all the parts out of the box, we'll have a look at them on the table. Okay, well here it is all out of the foam. Uh, nice looking tail, it just clips on and then screws, you've got your bag of goodies that come with it, left and right, tail plane, carbon rods for both wings, front and back, landing gear, the magic wings, look at this, they feel so light, yet they're so strong and rigid, as they talk about in the videos with them. And these look huge, the throws on them. This is going to be an interesting plane. I'm looking forward to getting this one going. Okay, look at this fuse. Look at that. It's huge. Compared to what we're used to with our park zone planes, this thing's big. Very big. Got a pilot and cockpit in there. Servos are already fitted. Got a screw hatch underneath. I guess that's where the... Uh, receiver goes and stuff. Right, the ESC is well positioned in this cooling hole. And at the front we've got the hatch, the familiar little tab now that we always have with them. And it just pulls off. In there you've got your battery compartment. Plenty of space for your battery. Strong magnets here holding your lid on. Back in and it clips on. So basically there it is. There's some nice air holes here to let the hot air out as well. This looks good. I bought the plug and play because I had some batteries that I use in my Habu. I've got some 3000 and some 3300 um, 4S batteries, so I had them to use so I didn't have to get any batteries. And for a receiver, earlier this year when they bought out the uh, AR400s, I bought a couple. 
because if you're like me and you bought the SE5A or the Albatross, they came with a six channel receiver in them. So I put the four channel receiver in my Albatross and pirated the AR600 and this is going into this plane. So yeah, it's worked out pretty good. Not too expensive really to swap over and muck around. I, little secret because you won't be able to do that anymore because now that they bought out the AR400 you're not going to see these 600s put into where they only need a 400 so if you're lucky enough to have one nip out and buy yourself a couple of 400s and uh, get yourself a couple of 600s cheap okay I'm not going to show you how to put this together like I said before because you shouldn't be flying one of these if you don't know if you haven't put a plane together like this before so I'm going to put it together we'll come back have a look at it together and then It'll be time for a maiden. Okay, I'll go do that. Well, she's all together and look at it. Isn't it a beautiful plane? I tell you, it feels so light. I put my battery in and the center of G is right where it says, six inches from back here out. And my center of gravity was dead on that with a 3000 battery pushed to the back. Now, uh, this plane's really nice. I've set up a channel in my DX8 and I've put in on low rates exactly what they recommended in the manual but I've added 10 more so if, on the Expo if the Expo was 20 I've made it 30 I've just given myself a little bit more you can always turn it down later but that's how I'm gonna start okay let's connect this battery up and see what it sounds like I've heard these motors run good there's the four beeps for the four cells as I was saying the low rates are exactly like in the manual except with a bit of extra but what I've done is my middle switch position I've given them all double what they were so if it was 30 for the hour on I've taken it up to 60 for the second one instead of 100 and I've left the 100% all around for the third position on my switch so uh, I've got plenty of movement there. Let's have a look at that rudder. There's the rudder movement on low rates. There's my medium rate. There's a hundred. There's a lot of movement there. Elevator. That's standard rates. Low. Medium. High. Lots of movement. High rates is got lots of movement. Let's have a quick look at them Aurons. There's low rates, medium, and there's the high. Wow, look at that. That is some movement, eh? What's that motor sound like? not even half. Whoa! Too much power for me to open that up in here. That really wants to move. Okay, there we have it. We've uh, unboxed her, we've built her, we've got her all ready to go. Time for the maiden. I've got my hardened the <coughs> up shirt on because that's what I'm going to have to do out there. There's no mucking around. It's going to be concentration 100% plus. And uh, I hope the maiden goes well. We'll see you soon.